Okay, so I'm here with Igor Runoff. He's the filmmaker behind Big Lies. Um, very interesting, sorry, um, documentary. Documentary yeah, film, expose. Uh, uh, congratulations, welcome to our festival. Thank you. Um, if you could just give us the synopsis of the film, please. Uh, it's. Um, I've seen it. It's a it's short a documentary um, uh, focusing on a number of issues, talking about uh, history, first of all, mm. about the history dating back to the 30th of the 20th century and uh, the human tragedy which took place at that point in the then Soviet Union. Uh, they called it uh, Galadamor, which is uh, uh, extermination by hunger. But uh, this is film not as much about the history, but I think about the lessons from uh, history which we should all learn in order not to repeat them. It's, thank you. It's quite interesting. I was reading some. I was reading the, um, the synopsis earlier this morning, and there was a, a, an interesting line about post-truth and fake news, and how we should all be aware of it. But the problem is fake news um, and the truth, or manipulation of truth, is nothing new, is it? You know, it's it's been around for centuries, centuries and centuries. Absolutely. But the appearance of the information technologies made it affect much more faster and quote-unquote efficient uh, disastrous uh, when uh, when Adolf Hitler first created this term coined this term the big lies uh, I don't think in his wildest dream could imagine that it would become so popular about politicians of the 21st century we're not talking about the the quantity of lies because you may seem that big lies is sort of a combination of a number of small lies. No, it's 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 qualitatively different. It means that uh, the 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 truth is distorted to an extent uh, which people don't believe that anybody in his uh, uh, sense can 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 present as truth, and that's why they believe it. And how this do we know. how do we cut through the chaff and make? How can we believe anything? It's because it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you read, I don't know, The Guardian or The New York Times or The BBC, how can you make sure that the news you receive is trusted and is believable? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what, what, what Hitler meant. He said, when you are, uh, uh, people are telling in their da daily life a lot of small truths, uh, small lies, and then when they, met, they meet similar lies in, in, uh, in, in the media, yeah. they... they uh, tend not to believe it when there's deviation from the common sense. But when they meet something which is beyond a, a, any imagination, that, that suddenly uh, people tend to, to believe in this. So, um, uh, and, and that's what fake news about, uh, to me. And why did you, I, I should actually also, can you just tell us a little bit about your background mm -hmm. before we move again onto this film, about where you come from and your some of your his, your media history? Uh, well, I, I'm a newcomer to, to, to filmmaking. I, I've been spent my life in uh, working in different positions. I was brought up in the Soviet Union, mm. and I had a professional career in a, as international economist. And uh, I started filming about 10 years ago when I did my first film uh, after the war between Russia and Georgia. Yeah, and, uh, I remember uh, it well. Right, uh, and then it was another film which I did um, um, about Afghanistan, about the big projects which uh, my organization, which I was working at at that time, was doing yeah. on demining uh, in Afghanistan. So this is the third film. And why particular this subject matter? Because we all know about fake news, but I'm guessing something happened that you decided you wanted to make sure that this film, this story was told. Yeah, th this is something which uh, I, I first heard about years ago in the late 90s and the early uh, uh, millennium. I, I, I spoke to an old friend of mine. He was uh, the, the brain the behind the Gorbachev perestroika in that day. His yeah. name is Alexander Yakovlev. Um, a very interesting intellectual, and uh, he was the first one who uh, uh, opened the, uh, by that time uh, the closed archives 
and uh, opened the truth about this artificial hunger, Galadamora. And he mentioned to me this, this figure, 10 million people who uh, died during two peaceful years. And That's an extraordinary number, isn't it? It's, it's unbelievable, and uh, uh, even more unbelievable that nobody knew about it. And uh, um, so that time I was thinking how, how I can react on that. And uh, when I was involved in this filmmaking, I thought maybe it's the right time uh, to start talking about it and telling Russians about it because it's, 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 it's unbelievable. But there are two monuments to Golodomor in Poland, where we're now. So there's no one single monument to two million Russians. Uh, who died in Holodomor. I'm not talking about the Soviet citizens. No, no. The total figure is 10 million now. Official 9.6 million people. But 2 million people died in, in southern Russian regions and until now not a single damn do uh, uh, monument to those victims. And I thought this is, this is not fair. Uh, somebody should, should start talking about this. And, and the interesting thing is, when we talk about fake news, and it's prevalence everywhere, you know, whether it's in Russia or the UK, the US, mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. But conversely, it makes it much, it's now much more difficult to suppress news because we've all got camera phones. So I suppose the governments are very well, in, in, uh, you know, North Korea or China, you two use those examples. They're forever, they're suppressing social media and the internet. But the genie's out of the bottle, isn't it? I mean, sooner or later, you know, North Korea is an example. One day, I don't know, maybe five years, maybe 50 years, I don't know when, that will implode. I mean, it, will, it has to, human nature, yeah. whether you believe in democracy or not. So, sorry, so the point I'm trying to make is that's the positive flip side, though, isn't it, of social media where everything is instant, where people can see and record and upload like that. So that makes the job of governments much more difficult to control the news agenda, or do you not agree? Uh, I, I think it's much more difficult now to, to conceal uh, what's happening. So I don't think that anything similar to uh, Galadamor can happen now and being so masterfully covered that nobody would even know about it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, on the other side, the, 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 the sophistication of uh, information technology is such that it's e easier to uh, produce uh, fake news, I mean, like coming back to this issue, uh, to, to mislead public opinion uh, and uh, the time span between uh, 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 the, the lies and the time which it, people understand that that's lies is much shorter, but uh, I think it does make the, 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 the issue much easier for us. Uh, I, I think what's important, and that's what the United Nations is now trying to do, to, uh, to introduce some common sense, some, uh, some rules for the internet, because uh, the, the level of, uh, control of information is such by the leading like com companies Google uh, Twitter uh, yeah, uh, Facebook, yeah yeah uh, that uh, and that uh, that there should be some 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 uh, um, general rules which everybody accepts is that possible though, because I, I mean the governments and and the, and, the, and the businesses too but that's where the the, the, the difficulty lies because uh, both governments and, and private sector is not interested to put any limits to, to their behavioral activities because there's a lot of security issues, financial issues, and so on. But that's, I think, where general public should uh, uh, mention their, um, their opinion, that, uh, should talk about it. And, uh, the, and the story that you told with this, when you look back at it, is it everything you wanted it to be, or was it, do you wish you'd added more to it, or is it about, the, is it kind of the film that you hoped it would be? Because no filmmaker, most filmmakers aren't necessarily, they always want to add, or take, or do something, but are you pretty happy with the finished product? Uh, I guess uh, no filmmaker, no director is hap happy with his <laughs> uh, finished pro uh, product, and uh, I, I think, um, I, I you know, to me, it is as much a social act as a cultural act, as a film. I think it's important for somebody to start talking about it, to attract mm. attention. And uh, uh, it's very difficult in a 40 minutes format to talk about uh, so many issues. And I tried uh, to mention, to go beyond Golodomor. So we're talking about, speaking about the fake news, about the 
uh, the dynamics of statistics about the people who were killed during the Second World War in the Soviet Union. Mm. And I show how the figure increased from the Stalin 7 million people to the current 42 million people. Is that what they think? It's 42 million? 42 million now. Oh uh, people died in, in the Soviet Union. And, uh, um, and uh, it, it, it's amazing that public opinion, when it was first, this figure first announced, kept almost complete silent about it. Now, look, you, you, as an economist, mm -hmm. I'm going off very slightly, mm -hmm. just finally, you can see things coming, I'm sure. What's an, an economic danger that you can see that's looming on the horizon now? Can you see something coming? Well, I have only, uh, both as economist and as a human being, uh, and I have a, a sense of a, a big crisis coming on, uh, coming on us, and very soon. Because I think the amount of um, uh, crisis elements are, are, there are so many of them in almost every sphere of human life, from immigration to nationalism, information technologies, policies, Climate security, change, yeah. crime, that uh, the, the story teaches us that uh, um, the only way to is to go through a rapid transition, and this cannot be done uh, without, uh, at no cost. So uh, I, I think that in the next year or two, we shall get into the period of very fast reconstruction and appearance of the new world order, and it will take a few years to happen. And it doesn't mean that these five years or four years will be very easy to people uh, to survive. There you go. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you.